Hi there, welcome to your lesson on area under curves and area between curves, part two. This is part two because way back when in our integration unit, we looked at these topics, these important topics in integral calculus. However, we're going to return to these now with our new understanding of calculus, our further understanding of sine, cosine, and, and other details that we have moved ahead with. So let's get into it. Let's take a look at uh, area under curves and area between curves. If you may remember, when we are asked to find the area under a curve, for example, the area under this red curve, x squared plus 1, we usually are given boundaries for that area. So here it says from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So from here to here, so we want this area here. When we find an area like that, all we have to do is find the definite integral. So here's the definite integral of that function, and the boundaries are 0 to 2. That means from 0 to 2. When we run that definite integral, the answer is the area under the curve. And in our last video, we reminded ourselves how definite integrals work. So once again, when we have a definite integral, it means we have boundaries. We take the integral of what we see here, the function, which becomes this. Then we write our boundaries here again. And then to calculate the value of that, because a definite integral will always have a single numerical value, we first substitute 2 in there, which we see here, and then we subtract the other boundary substituted in there, which was 0. When we do that subtraction, we get our answer, and that is the area under a curve. Okay, so let's try this one here. Okay, and this is a uh, another type of problem. The last uh, one I showed you here was area under a curve, and this problem is about area between two curves, and it looks like this. Find the area of the region bounded by the curves. This one here, f of x equals e to the 2x plus 1, and g of x equals x plus 4. So when we talk about an area bounded by two curves, it means the area between them. So in this one, and this is one we've done before, so I'm just recapping what we've looked at. Here is the function x plus 4. It's a linear function. Here's the function e to the 2x plus 1. It's the exponential growth curve. And then between those two curves is an area. So to find that area, the process was, first of all, to find out where they intersect, so right here and right here, and those two x values are here. Those can be determined by setting the two equations equal to each other. That can be done on our calculator and finding the points of intersection. So now we know the boundaries of the area we're looking for. It is this x value and this x value. Then we run an integral, just like we saw in the last question with area under a curve, and we run an integral where we actually subtract the two functions, one from the other. So we always take the upper function minus the lower one. The upper one means the one that's on top when you look at these two, and then the one underneath. So you subtract them, run the integral with those two boundaries, which are the intercept points, and then you get an answer. That is the area between the two curves. So now let's use those ideas uh, through a new lens. We've done a little bit more with calculus now, and we can uh, try different kinds of problems. So here's one. It says, find the area of the region bounded by this curve, the lines x equals negative 1 and x equals 1 and the x-axis. Okay, so you might want to begin by graphing that. You try that on your calculator. Enter this function and set your window maybe from x equals negative 2 to x equals 2 so that you can see these two boundaries. And let's find the area under that curve and the x-axis between those lines. And this is the graph you should see. When you graph this function, it looks something like this. And then we are talking about the area bounded by x equals negative 1, which is here and x equals 1, which is here, and the x-axis. So this is the area we're talking about right here. It has these boundaries, those two lines, the x-axis, and the curve. So how do we find that area? Well, we just run a, a definite integral for that function. So we can set up a function like this. Area equals the definite integral of that function between negative 1 and 1. Okay, now you might look at this and think, well, that's pretty easy. I can move on from here. But this is not as easy as it looks. Finding this integral is not easy at all. We actually do not have the skills to find this kind of integral. So what we're going to do is just grab our calculator. So grab your calculator now, and as you remember from our previous lesson, you can run a definite integral on the calculator. So press the math button, and then number 9, and enter this definite integral. And that will be our answer for this area. So what is it? Okay, you've run it, and uh, your calculator should give you a value of 1.49. Hope that worked out for you. 
um, let's, in case it didn't, let me just remind you how it's done. Press on, and let me clear this out. I already have one there, but you press math, and then you go to number nine. Number nine is an integral, enter, and then you can enter the definite integral you see here. Okay, let's try the next problem. It says, find the area of the region bounded by the curves f of x equals sine x and g of x equals 0.5x. So now we have two functions and we're looking for the area or region bounded by them. That means between them, between them. All right, so first step might be to put those in your calculator and graph it, see what it looks like and see if you can find an area cut between those two functions. Okay, this is the graph you should see on your calculator. You may have set your window in a certain way, but eventually after moving things around a little bit, you can get the window just right and see that. So here's our linear function, 0.5x, and here's our sine function. You can see there's an area here and an area here. There's some symmetry here. Um, so actually this area and this area will be identical. So in this case, it will be enough to find one of these areas and just double it because they're identical. That symmetry ensures that. So how do we proceed? Well, we're going to find the area between curves. So I'm going to call this, uh, this location A, and I'm going to call this location here B, because if I can find what A and B are, I'll know the boundaries of that little zone of the area right here. Okay, so the area then is two times, like I said, that that area is the same, so we're doubling it two times the integral from a to b, so from here to here, so I'm only looking for this integral, the area here, and it's upper function minus lower function. So the upper one, when I look at this section here, the upper one is the linear one, and the lower one is the sine one. So I subtract them and find the integral from a to b, and the area is going to be two times that again because these are identical. So try that out. Let's, uh, let's do this one. This one we can take the integral of. So in the last one, we were uh, kind of trapped with a very difficult integral, and we had to go right to our calculator here. Well, we can find this, uh, this integral. We know how to do that, so let's try. First step is to uh, take an integral of this, which is this. And then next, look at this one, and integral of that is this. Now we still need to know what those boundaries are. What are A and B? So find those on your calculator. What are those two intersection points? Because those will be the boundaries of the area we need. Okay, so grabbing the calculator, we find out that they intersect at actually three locations. So this actually gives the answer to the third intersection as well. So this one is negative 1.89, and then 0, and then 1.89. And notice that these numbers are identical, positive and negative, because like I said, there's symmetry here. Okay, so now we have our boundaries. We can put them in here. Um, you can now continue by plugging the 0 in there and running the definite integral. So putting zero in there and subtracting this one put in there. So we can do that the long way, or we can just go right to our calculator again and just uh, find that using the integral. So try that. Try running this integral on your calculator with our two boundaries that we found. And let's see what we get. Okay, the total area should be 0.842. That should be after you've doubled it here. So double check, make sure you can get that answer by running this integral on your calculator. And just so we know, just to recap some main things here. So the area was made up of two parts here, right? One of them was the integral from negative uh, 1.89 to 0, which is the one we did here. And it's g of x minus f of x, because it's the upper function is g of x, the linear one, minus s, uh, the sine function, which is f of x. And then you could say plus this area, which is 0 to 1.89, and this time f of x, which is the sine functions on top, minus g of x, the other function on the bottom. So you could run the area like that by doing two integrals, or do it the way we looked at it, where you do two times one of the areas because they're identical. All right, I have one last one for you. Check this one out right here. And I want you to give it a try on your own. So we have, a, it says use your GDC, so use your calculator, to find the area bounded by these curves, y equals cosine x and y equals x squared. I would suggest you graph it, take a look at the graph. All that is important, being able to sketch the graph and represent the area we're looking for, and not just rely on your calculator to do one simple calculation. So sketch the graph, show where they intersect, find the bounded area clearly, and then calculate it. Let's try. Okay, so here's what the graph should look like. We have our y equals x squared parabola in blue and uh, part of the cosine curve here in red. Notice there's an area bounded between them here. So we need to find the boundaries, that x value, that x value. 
If you calculated those two intersection points, you should have found them to be these, negative 0.824 and 0.824. Now you have the boundaries of your integral, so you can set up your integral like this, and cosine is on top, parabola is on the bottom, so you subtract it like that, and the answer should be that. So I hope that went okay. Uh, I hope you have a renewed understanding of area under and between curves, and uh, a great job. We will see you soon.